Sister Marla was dressed as a bride. And she had <coughs> snow white sparkling hair. And she was walking down this middle aisle. And it was, she was so beautiful. She is so beautiful. But in this dream, she was even more beautiful. And I thought, oh Lord, oh Lord. I mean, I knew that I'd been called to be in the bride and all that. And then in the dream, it changed. And she was about ready to deliver a child. And she had a wedding gown. And I thought, Lord, that's so strange. That is so strange. And then it, it, it touched my heart when I woke up and I remembered the dream that we, the people of God, the bride, has to be with child. And let that child come forth. And isn't that what God's doing in our lives? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful how he's doing that in our yeah. lives? Yeah. Oh, I'm so thankful for what Praise God's birthing in my soul. Yeah. What he's birthing in my physical life. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for weeks now, I've been ill over the years. This is the first time I've been in convention in three years because I was always in the hospital. And I wanted to be here so bad this year. And I've been praying for a lot of, well, I've been praying for all of you. I don't know all of you. Some of you I do. But I said, Lord, make a way for God's people to be here. Those that you want to be in this meeting, Lord, will you make a way? And look at how many people are here. And I appreciate that. And because I've been sick, I used to be the first one out on the dance floor. Because I love the dance of praise for the Lord because of what he means to me. And I miss that because I'm stuck with a cane or stuck in that electric chair. And I'm thankful for them, but I don't like them. And so I, I felt faith building in me for weeks now. For the longest time. I have so many things wrong with me, not just my spirit at times, but my physical body has so many issues, and I never knew what to pray for, and it was like, God, I'm a mess everywhere, and I'd go up for prayer, and Brother Marla would, because I'm thinking, oh, he's going to pray in the name of Jesus, be healed, blah, 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 you know, and I'm going to be healed, but he didn't pray that way. He would put his hands on me, my head. And he would say, Lord, you know Sister Judy loves you. And she serves you and she serves your people. And she believes you're going to heal her. And I thought, oh yes, he's getting it, he's getting it. <laughs> and then he would say, but Lord, she knows that your grace is sufficient. <laughs> and it was like, uh, he popped my balloon, you know. I'm thinking, well, I'm not, well, Brother Marvel, how could you do that? I want you to say in the name of Jesus, be that whole, you know, like you see on TV. <laughs> well, sometimes we see it around here, too. And, uh, but he didn't pray that way. And I know he prays for me every day because he loves me. I'm the sheep. And I know he prays for me every day. And most of you that know me, you pray for me every day. And I appreciate it so much. I would be standing here as long as I'm standing. Usually it's like a minute. And uh, God is so good. His grace is so good and so sufficient. Yes, Lord. How could we not praise him? So I would sit back. I never, I never did go to bother Brother Marlow much for counseling because I'm thinking, well, I got the Holy Ghost and I know how to counsel with God. I know how to listen to God and I know how to hear God. So I didn't really bother him much, very much. And but every once in a while, it's, it's almost like, well, you know, he's my dad in the Lord, and it's like sometimes you just gotta go talk to your dad. You know, and a couple of times here and there were. It was 36 years now. I would go and talk with him. And, and you know, he never counseled me wrong. I remember one time I was sitting nearby when he was counseling a few people, a couple of people. 
and he went to sleep. Yes. I mean, he was asleep. But whenever they were saying something, he would, he would answer them. And I knew in my spirit that he was asleep. And I thought, God, aren't you good? Aren't you good? Here are this per couple of people. They were so stressed, and they were so burdened, and our pastor was so tired because he never stops. I mean, this man probably gets three hours of sleep a night. That's just his metabolism, I guess. And he, and I'm thinking, he's sitting there getting a little bit of rest, and yet he's never missing a, a sentence that these people were pouring out to him. And he was ministering life to them. And I thought, God, you are such a miraculous God that you can do that. So moving right along, about 18 months ago, well, it was 18 months in October, but about six months before that, I was very ill, didn't even realize how ill I was. Couldn't keep any food down. Every time I ate, I would just throw it back up. And so I dwindled away. Ha ha. <laughs> I lost 85 pounds. And I tried to lose, I've been heavy all my life, and I've tried to <coughs> lose it over the years. And one day I'd do good, and the next day, or the next seven years, I wouldn't do good. <laughs> you know, we all struggle with something. And, uh, but finally they rushed me to the hospital, and I'd had open heart surgery, I've had three heart attacks, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they put a defibrillator and a, and a pacemaker in me. And then this past November to, no, it was last, about a year ago, I guess, my hemoglobin, they couldn't get it above seven points. And for a woman, it should be t between 12 and 16, 15. And they couldn't get it above seven points. Of course, everybody started praying. I had to go to an oncologist, blah, 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 you know. And little by little, little by little, little by little, line up on line. Two weeks ago was 11.1. Has it been that way in over 30 years? Nobody had ever been concerned about it before, but you know, somebody got concerned. And God has been so good. I mean, he's been good to you all, too. But it's like he's better to me than anybody, and I know we all feel that way, don't we? We all feel like he loves us better than anybody else, but he doesn't. He loves us all the same, you know? And I'm, I'm so appreciative of being here because God is, if I wasn't loving him and him loving me, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the prayers of God's people, I wouldn't be here. And I'm so thankful. And a few weeks ago, I started praying. When we heard about Brother Harris falling and breaking his shoulder, I started praying for him. And they wanted to come down for the meeting, and, and they really didn't have the funds to come. And I told Dean, I said, well, when you talk to your dad, you tell him I'm praying that the Lord will make a way. He's sitting here, and Margie's sitting here, too. And it's like, isn't God good? We can have a need and we can pray. Isn't God good? And he just answers our prayers. And then we get all, like, oh, wow. Like, I mean, I don't know why we have that reaction. I guess because we're human beings. But it's like we pray hard and we just seek him and pray and pray. And then when he answers us, it's like, oh, he really you know, I know some of you felt the same way. I'm not the only one. But I appreciate it so much. So the last several weeks, I've been feeling my faith build and build and enlarge and enlarge. And it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So I absolutely believe with everything in me that Sister Donna, Sister Judy will be healed this weekend. I absolutely believe that. And then, of course, you know, you hear this little voice. Oh, yeah. I believe. But you know what? Even if that little voice says that, God's still going to heal us. And if he doesn't, we're still going to love him and we're still going to serve him with a good, good, good spirit. <laughs> She's saying, sing. Well, I'll tell you, over the years, Brother McKibbins was saying last night, he writes songs and his wife writes songs. Well, I tried to write a song once. The Lord gives me songs. 
And so, one time, Sister Mar, I used to sing in the choir, and uh, Sister Mar said, Judy, we need a couple of verses for this song we were singing. Visit us now, Lord Jesus. Remember that song, Sister Mar? And oh, I was so, I thought, my God, she asked me to write a song. I was so honored. And the next morning, I got my cup of coffee, and I got my notebook and my pen, and I said, all right. I couldn't write a song. It was like I could not even put two words together or three and make them rhyme. But when there's inspiration, yeah. when a minister of God gets on his feet, yeah. the Lord gives me a song and it's like I hear about ding. Yeah. And I grab whatever's around me. Sometimes it's a, a it's a greeting card or a napkin or whatever that's handy, and I start writing. He gives me the melody, the lyrics, everything. And it's like, oh, wow, I'm a songwriter. And then I thought, no, Jesus is a songwriter. You know? When he was talking about sing, 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 I love to sing. I love to sing and bless God's people. And I do it quite free. Well, not, not as much as I should probably. But I love the Lord for loving me, Amen. giving me that gift of singing and that gift of loving people. I love to be hospitable. I love to feed people. You know, and, and when we're good to God's people, we feed them and take care of them. Oh, God, isn't he good to us? Isn't he good to us? Oh, what more can we ask? What more can we ask? I bless all of you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 